Support for Flying Valiant Builds is brought to you by First and 64th Customs on YouTube, Video Geek Productions, The Brian Smith YouTube Channel, Jonathan Von Esch, Wade Hendricks, Larry Presnell, and from support from viewers like you. Please like, share, and subscribe. Time to take this forward and make it shine, but in a different way. Hey there folks, Chuck here, and we're back with another build. This time it's a special kind of challenge. It was sponsored by Mike's Mods and Customs, who generously sent out a bunch of these 1940 Fords with the Captain America logo on them to myself, Kudas Diecast Customs, Somo Diecast, and Diecast Pirate. It was kind of an unexpected thing to find in the mail, but Mike's a good dude, and I loved the challenge that he sent. You can check out the video where I got the car at the link up in the right corner or down in the description. But without any further ado, since I'm recording this on the day that it's due, let's get to the breakdown. As I said, Mike sent out this Hot Wheels 1940 Ford. He suggested that this be a street rod build, but I chose to take a little liberty with that theme and make my car into a shine runner. My family actually has a history of running shine and my first real build on this channel was a moonshine runner. You can check that build out in the upper right hand corner and it was high time I do another one. This casting was already pretty street rotted out so to make a good shine runner I had to make it look more stock and we'll get to that in a minute. I also wanted to back off on the weathering a little bit. I didn't want to do a shiny build, but I wanted to really focus on making it subtle this time. It always goes on way heavier than I think it will. Restraint was the order of the day for this one. I also wanted to make some shine myself. Oh, and one more thing Mike said that I had to do with this casting when I was finished is give it away. So we'll get to that at the end of the episode. Ready? Punch that subscribe button. Let's boogie. This is one of the few times I actually saved cracking the card because it was such a wild card that's a very weird drawing of Captain America. I also love this casting because it is a single rivet casting and it uses the front grille as a way to hold things in. The less tapping I have to do, the happier I am. Pledge dip for the blue glass, the only thing that I really had a problem with with this casting, but it still turned out okay. Of course, first thing to go on the interior is that nub steering wheel, then drill and put in my own steering wheel that I 3D printed. I'm getting better at being proactive and checking to see if the wheels and tires fit that I'm going to add, and of course they didn't. These are Maisto white walls with steelies from a 1960 Ford Starliner. They had very thick axles, so I had to use a big piece of brass tubing, which meant really widening out the channels inside the chassis. Then cut the tubing, the glue, and cut those weird little axle protectors they put on the bottom of some of the chassis. Because we don't need them, they don't look that accurate, and usually they cause more interference than help on custom wheels. There are also two tailpipes molded into the bottom. So I took a one millimeter bit in my pin vise and drilled those out. Casting stripped clean, just had to wire wheel away the remaining bits of yellow. And it had some pretty severe casting lines. I tried filing and then eventually resorted to a small grinding stone on my Dremel and then a good hard wire wheeling with my bench grinder to smooth out the areas where the casting lines were. Die cast metal is pretty soft and easy to work with. So if you have a bench grinder and you really want to smooth things out subtly, using the wire wheel on your bench grinder is a good way to go, especially if you're not planning to do a Spectre Flame paint job. I wanted this Shine Runner to look like it had seen some action, so I gave it some souvenirs from the local revenuer in the back. And since it's always good to know what's behind you when running Shine, gave it a side view mirror out of the original axle from the car. Then it was off to priming and paint. I wanted to give this car a black but not quite black matte paint job, so I used an actual mixture of light gray, burnt umber, and black to give it the color that it turned out and I'm very happy with how it turned out. Originally I was going to go for like a really sketchy fast paint job like I did on my first Shine Runner but I liked the color that came out so much I gave it a decent thorough coating and I'm glad I changed my mind on that course of action. Chassis was painted in mahogany and the interior was painted red which was immediately hit with a satin clear coat then a subtle dirt filter and some Nuln oil wash. I wanted to continue the subtle weathering underneath. I used a warm gray for the 
exhaust pipes and you can see where spraying on the airbrush mahogany really worked well as far as giving some variance in the darkness of the brown tones. I had this black green from Vallejo that I used for the Ford V8 and it's almost the perfect color for that early 40s Ford V8 block color. I then used dark rust deposits all around the frame to draw the lower parts of the chassis forward and add the illusion of depth. Some blackened steel for the gas tank and a old friend I haven't used in a long time, the Maltau chrome pen for the grill. I really do want to do a comparison between this and the mirror paint because the more I work with the mirror paint, the more stark the difference between these two paints are and the more I like the mirror paint, honestly. But that's another video for another time. The interesting thing about these Maisto wheels is that the rubber part was actually very thin and the white wall is part of the plastic wheel, which meant I had to paint the white walls on. I went with this heavy khaki color because I wanted the white walls to look really dirty, like they hadn't been cleaned in a while. And you know how they kind of get that yellowish hue to them when they've got a lot of dust and build up on them. That's what I was going for. Originally, I thought this would be too dark of a yellow, but in the end, it turned out way better than I thought it would. I think we underestimate how dark black is and we overestimate how non-white most things that we think of in our head as white are. So when using black, try to think lighter than black. And when using white, try to think way darker than the white that you're thinking of doing. I gave the entire body of the car a matte clear coat. And once that was dry, I hit it with this MIG Subtle Dirt filter, which did a great job of adding a layer of dinginess to the super dark gray that this turned out. Initially, the dirt was much thicker, but as I worked worked with it, the oil in my fingers took off the dirt from the high spots and it actually worked out really well for kind of mimicking parts of the car that would stay cleaner because they were higher and more exposed than the rest of the car. Some tarnished black for the running boards. I decided to get bold since I had the Maltau pen out already and hand draw on the chrome strip on the side instead of using the bare metal foil tape. I usually prefer to use the bare metal foil, but since I was in a hurry, I figured if I could keep my hand steady for two seconds, it was worth the gamble and it actually paid off. There was very little that I needed to clean up and I'm learning that it's actually quite easy to clean up the Maltau pen and the mirror paint with a toothpick if you've clear coated what's underneath. I gave the chassis a wash with some Vallejo oily earth and I was quite happy with how that made the underside look. One thing that's really hard for castings in this scale to get right is that windshield split and usually there's just a little hump in the middle of the windshield to imply that split like in this casting but this is where the bare metal foil really paid off because it gives just enough distance to look like a trim piece in the middle and it really paid off. It gave exactly the impression I was going for. It's cars actually had very little trim on the windows. Usually it was only on the front windshield. Speaking of the glass, I wanted one last souvenir from the revenuers in one of the split windows. So I did a test fit, drilled a one millimeter hole, then made some spider webbing with the back of an X-Acto blade. This was a lesson I learned the hard way. I got things out of order. I did the dust before the panel liner, and so you're going to see me do the dust here, and then I'm going to realize that the panel liner is going to wash away most of the dust, especially as I try to clean it up, and then I'm going to have to do the dust all over again. But I wanted to leave this in to maybe save you a step or two on your build if you try to do something similar. I was really happy with how that dust turned out though. This is the Tamiya black panel liner and this was another advantage of going with a really dark gray is that the black panel liner still really stood out against what your naked eye would immediately interpret as black. Then all of a sudden there's this extra dark area around it and that really adds to the depth of the model especially around door lines and creases in the body. And once it's dry it's very easy to clean up with a little pressure on a cotton swab. If you can't get it off, you can very, very lightly dampen the cotton swab with a little enamel thinner or mineral spirits, and that will really help clean things up. It's relatively safe to work with too, as long as what's underneath is acrylic based. So once I had everything cleaned up from the panel liner, it's time to do another quick touch up on the chrome trim, because I realized I did not go far enough on it, and then clean that up with a toothpick. And then since I already had the Maltau pen out, it was time to do the headlights, taillights, and windshield. As I was working, I realized that the car did not have door handles or a trunk handle, so I replicated those with a little bare metal foil tape. I used a little bit of the Maltau paint with a toothpick to draw out the bullet holes, and we'll come back to those for one more thing later. I found this really cool 40 Ford. I loved the wheels and tires on it, but I didn't want to waste the white walls, so I kept the white walls. I just decided to do the front wheels red and the back wheels white, like the car in the photo. That photo was also validation that I hadn't gone too dark on the white walls. This is Wraith's Bone White, which again isn't really white at all. It's 
very much a warm ivory color. Hey, if you haven't already done it yet, let's turn that red subscriber button gray and hit that little thumbs up button. It makes the Google robots very happy and we don't want them to be unhappy. Once the paint had dried, I used the Tamiya panel liner on the wheels and then dabbed them immediately with a Q-tip. I also hit the tailpipes and some of the darker areas around the chassis. I used some Vallejo light rust wash on the wheels because I felt they were still a little too clean. And while I had that out, I hit the tailpipes and some little areas around the bottom of the engine and the chassis frame. Finished off the bullet holes with the Tamiya panel liner and immediately dabbed it with the Q-tip to clean up the areas around it and leave the little tiny bit that was left in the middle to complete the illusion of a hole and added just a little bit of rust streaking, again, keeping it very subtle. Also, because I love doing mismatched panels, I gave one of the back fenders a rust wash just to make it look a little different from the rest of the car. I also hit some of the wheel wells and the underside of the running boards since those will be visible on the finished car. Again, using that car for reference, I realized there needed to be a fuel filler cap on the driver's side rear fender. So I hit it with my automatic punch, drilled the one millimeter hole, and used the other side of the axle that I used for the rear view mirror to make a gas cap. And I think it turned out okay. A little panel liner to recreate some leaking, and a little rust wash on the cap itself to finish it off. Then it was time to fire up the 3D printer. Again, I'm doing this all literally last night, the night before it's due. So I don't know why I thought it was a good idea to 3D print parts for this project, but I really had a bee in my bonnet that I wanted to add stock looking bumpers to it and some moonshine jugs and jars. And I found a model on Thingiverse of a 1940 Ford sedan and in Tinkercad chopped off the bumpers and, and 3D printed those along with some crates, jugs, and a jar I made in Tinkercad to complete the cargo for the vehicle. While that was going, I attached the wheels to the chassis, making sure everything fit properly, and gluing them on. This is not going to be a roller because of the nature of the Maisto axles. They don't allow the wheels to spin freely. They are firmly attached to the axle, and I did not really have time to engineer something that would make the wheels work. So we're just going to glue them in place. When the prints were finished, I hit all of them with some brush-on sealer from Autoborn. Since it was late at night at this point and I didn't want to use my compressor and wake up my sleeping family. But Autoborn Sealer is great in an airbrush and when it's brushed on, it does a really good job of covering the area and making it very easy to brush paint on later. Here's the bumpers I printed. They turned out pretty nice, all things considered. I was a little worried because they're about half the size of the original model. So sometimes thin stuff like that front railing will not come out, but it turned out okay. I did a lot of test fitting before gluing things in place. I made some marks on the front to actually drill out holes for the front bumper so it would stay on firmly. The back one is just glued on to the surface, but it sits close enough that I was able to add some hidden glue points so it's on pretty firmly. The front's a little trickier, so I drilled some holes. I used AK Interactive varnished wood for the crates after painting the jugs with wraith bone and orange brown and some weathered wood for the corks. I then dry brushed on some wood grain, and while those were drying, I mixed up some tinny tin and some gold to get some tarnish variations on the mason jar lids before repeating the crate process on them as well. I also brushed on some ultra matte varnish to make sure they had as little sheen as possible. And since I had the ultra matte out, I laid some on the chassis as well. I did finally break out the Stuart Simple mirror paint for the front and rear bumpers because I really wanted them to be shiny and that stuff lays on so nicely, especially over the auto worn sealer. Once the crates were sealed up, I hit them with some strong tone quick shade from Army Painter and some Tester's acrylic stoplight red. And it was time to Put the moonshine jars in the back. I wanted to originally cut it so the trunk was open, but ultimately ran out of time. So settled for the back seat. And even though you're not really going to be able to see it unless you're really looking for it, it's in the video and we all know it's there. So like most good shine runners, this will be our little secret. And now we get to the right part of the build for doing the dusting. This is light sand from the Tamiya weathering powders, which does a pretty good job of imitating the light sandy dirt that would be on a Florida shine runner that's taking the back roads to avoid the revenuers. And it was very tricky to keep this subtle. I used some wet effects on the wraith spoon I put over the chrome on the headlights to imitate glass, place the rear license plate, added a bare metal foil trunk handle, put some more wet effects on the mirror, added some engine oil so that there were some shiny spots on the bottom of the car and some brown dirt deposits inside the treads of the tires as well as a few strategic spots around the chassis. Then it was time for the decal and the number and off to the turntable for the big reveal. So one more time, let's see what we started with. The uh, Captain America 1940 Ford street rod with lots of shaved trim and handles and bumpers. And let's see where we ended up. A subtly modified 1940 Ford that's got a few secrets under the skin. 
I'm really happy with how this one turned out, and it's gonna hurt to give it away, but that was the rules, and I'm sticking to them. Before I get to how we're doing the giveaway, I want to give a big thanks to all my patrons. You saw the Bandit level patrons at the beginning of the video, now the Rockford level patrons, Mid Island Custom Diecast, Maple Leaf Matchbox Makeovers, Double B's Customs, Gary Tasker, Tracy Sutherland, and Mr. Zanzibar91. Also, my Douglas level patrons, the Good Bad Better podcast, Jordan Kleinen, the Courage Crest YouTube channel, and the Jim Silva YouTube channel. I'm incredibly grateful to my patrons, and we're at 185 a month on my Patreon amount, which is incredible, and I'm so grateful. I have decided that if I do reach 200 a month, I am going to up the prize every month to one of the customs that I built that month, which is a good way to keep me building and a nice way to improve what I'm offering to my patrons. If you got some extra scratch lying around and you want to support my building efforts, you can always join the Flying Valiant Racing Team over at flyingvaliant.com. That'll take you to the Patreon page where you can see what benefits you get as a Patreon member and the different tier levels. I am very booked up right now on my commissions, which is a good problem to have, but if you do have something that you really want made, you can email me at flyingvaliant at gmail.com and if you're watching this a few months down the road, hopefully I'll have gotten that list down and I can take on more commissions again. But if you have any general questions, I'm happy to help and I know a few other vendors that might be able to help you a bit faster than I can. Alright, on to the giveaway. So, I am going to be giving this car away next week. So between now and June 13th, US Eastern Time, Please make sure you have subscribed to the channel and you leave a comment in this video suggesting a name for the tiny alligator that is always roaming around the background of my photos. And that's all you have to do. Between now and the 13th, be subscribed and leave a suggested name for the little alligator. I will be picking the winner on the 14th and then you have 48 hours to email me at flyingvaliant at gmail.com proving you are the winner and I will get it shipped off to you and hopefully you'll be somewhere where the shipping is cheap. I am making this open to anyone because people have been very generous to me and I want to continue to pay that generosity forward. And again, check out Mike's Mods and Customs channel. His link and the other creators links will be in the description below. Please subscribe to their channels and tell them I sent you. As always, I want to thank you for coming along with me for the ride. So until next time, Stay fresh, cheese bags.